Okay, let's solve some growth and decay problems. Example 1. Suppose that a colony of lice grows exponentially. After one day, 50 lice are counted. After three days, 200 were counted. How many are there originally? What is the exponential growth equation for the colony? Okay, let's start. So the first thing that, you know, when you solve these kinds of problems, the first thing that you want to do is you want to define your variables, okay? So that will be our step one. So let uh, y be the number of lies. Um, t, let t uh, be the number of days because the time here was measured in days so okay so we'll start our counting from zero to t okay the second step will be to write our given initial conditions okay what are the initial conditions so after one day so that will be so t equals one y is 50 Okay, that's the first initial condition. The second initial condition is that when t equals 3, after 3 days, 200 were counted. So, y equals 200. And that's it. So, these are our initial conditions. Now, the third step here would be to write our general solution. y equals c times a to the power of t now in 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 other references this might look different but uh they're gonna give you the same results okay so y equals c times a to the power of t y and t are our variables c and a will be our parameters step four so what do we do next okay the next step will be to plug in our initial conditions. Where do we plug it in? We're going to plug it into our general solution. Okay. First initial condition is this. So when t is 1, y is 50. So y is 50 equals c times a to the power of 1. Well, a to the power of 1 is just a, so you're going to leave that as c times a. Uh, the second initial condition is t equals 3, y equals 200. So y equals 200, c times a to the power of 3. Okay. So now what we have here is that we have two equations and two unknown. And we can solve this by substitution the method of substitution so how are we going to do that well observe that we can write this c times a cube as c times a times a squared right c times a times a squared is c times a cubed okay but then c times a is 50 right that's 50 so you can write that as 50 times a squared but that is equal to 200 okay so to solve for a we're gonna divide both sides by 50 so this will cancel out 200 divided by 50 is 4 so 4 equals a squared and if you take the square to both sides, it will give you a equals 2. Okay, so you've solved for a. Now we're going to solve for c. How are we going to do that? Well, we can just plug it in here. So that will be 50 equals c times 2. Okay. And then to get rid of that 2, we're going to divide that both sides. So then that gives us 25 equals C. So that's 25 equals C. 
Okay, so we have our A and we have our C. The next step, step five, will be to um, plug in C and A to the general solution okay so the general solution is y equals c times a to the power of t we're going to plug in our uh, values so c is 25 times a a is 2 to the power of t okay so remember our general solution is this we found the values of C and A, we plugged it in, so this is what we got. We got Y equals 25 times T, uh, 2 to the power of T. Now this is the answer to the second question. The second question was, what is the exponential growth equation? This is it. This is the equation. Okay. Now, to answer the first question, the first question was how many are there originally? So, what we're going to do there is uh, we're just going to plug in t equals 0. Because originally, that was when t equals 0, right? Okay, so originally. Originally. Okay, so we're going to plug it in. So y equals 25 times 2 to the power of 0, because t equals 0. That gives us 25 times 1, which equals 25. Okay, so originally there were, fifth, uh, no, no. There were 25 lies in the column. Okay, let's have another example. The rate of decay of radium is said to be proportional to the amount of radium present. If the half-life of radium is 1690 years, and there are 200 grams on hand now, how much radium will be present in 845 years? Okay. Now, the question here is that how do we know that this is in an exponential decay problem? Well, the answer to that lies in this phrase here. Proportional to the amount of radium present. That is by definition exponential uh, decay because it's the rate of decay. So by definition, that's uh, exponential decay. So that's how we know this is an exponential decay problem. Okay. So uh, let's start. Let's solve this problem. Step one again will be to define your variables. Okay. So variable here would be well y would be the amount of radium okay and then uh, t would be the number of years because the time here is in years so the number of years okay so we're done with the variables step two would be to write our initial conditions so let's look at this phrase or this last sentence it says if the half-life of radium is 1690 years and there are 200 grams on hand now so 200 grams on hand now meaning at t equals zero which is now so t equals zero y equals 200 okay and then 
if the half life of radium is 1690 half life is the amount of time that the amount of radium becomes one half of the original amount okay that's what we mean by half life so if at uh 1690 years the amount of radium becomes half of the original then that will mean at t equals 1690 the amount of radium will be one half of the original which is 200 divided by 2 equal to 100 okay so after 1690 years there's only one half of the original amount and that will be 100 okay so that's our initial condition okay um step 3 here let's see we are going to write our um general solution okay and the, since this is exponential decay the general solution is the same so y equals c times a to the power of t Okay, step 4. Plug in initial conditions to the general solution. Okay? So when t equals 0, y is 200, so 200 equals c times a to the power of 0. And here it looks like we can solve for c because a to the 0 is 1 so this gives us c so that means c is equal to 200 so let's write that c equals 200 okay so we already know the value of c then we're going to use the second initial condition when uh so y equals 100 when t is 1690 so that would be c times a to the power of t which is 1690 um but then we know what c is c is 200 we can plug it in so that would be 200 times a to the power of 1690 okay So then we can divide both sides by 200 to get rid of the 200 here. So this will give us one half equals a to the power of 1690. And then to solve for a, we're gonna take the um, we're gonna raise both sides by one over. Um, one thousand six hundred ninety. Okay, so one over one thousand six hundred ninety. So we'll get a equals. So this one will cancel out. So a equals one half to the power of one over one thousand six hundred ninety. Okay. So we got our a and our c. Step five will be plug in c and a to uh, the general solution. Okay, so let's do that. So y equals c. C is two hundred. So 200 times a is one half to the power of 1690. So that's um, one half power of one over 1690. So this is our a, and then to the power of t. Okay. Um, we can simplify this as. 200 times this becomes one half to the power of t over 1690. Okay, 
so we're done we have our formula or our equation the question was how much radium will be present in 600 no 845 years okay so at t equals 845 you'll plug it in here okay so that will give us y equals 200 times one half to the power of 845 over 1690 okay this gives us 200 times one half to the power of one half okay because uh, 845 divided by 1690 is one half and if we calculate that will give us approximately 142 so that means that there will be about 142 grams of radium left after 845 years that's it